everybody, welcome back to the Jeep Journals. It is a fabulous Friday, January the 28th, and I'm nearing the end of my third week of making more rational choices when it comes to my own health. And during this week, I encountered all kinds of situations, which I know that I touched on in the previous video segments, so I won't really cover them a whole lot. And in addition, I'm continuing to maintain my weight results, which are basically a decrease in how much I weigh based on the choices that I'm making, which are more reasonable for both myself and for the economy and for the ecosystem, I should say, in which we all live. So what does that mean? I've explained in many previous segments that if it's bad for the environment, it might be bad for ourselves. And so to forego things that come in plastic packages is something that is beneficial for my own and for our own well-being. And I understand that this is still quite difficult to process because no matter what I go and obtain, unless I grew it in my own yard out of the resources that I was presented with over this season, then this bounty of goodness also came from another resource. What do you mean by this, Ray? This is way too much information. You're using way too many words. Well, I've got a banana today for my breakfast and it's coming up on noon here right now. And in my breakfast, I basically was able to obtain a piece of fruit at the market, which did not include packaging on top of the packaging that it already arrived in. So, because I'm having a banana and not, for an example, a meatless taco from a taco place that came in foil with a little plastic container for the salsa with a, pap with a paper bag on top of that, plus some paper napkins, because I'm not using all of those extra resources and then errantly figuring out how to allocate them, I'm essentially using less resources to accomplish the same thing that someone else would be accomplishing uh, possibly for the second time, maybe even more by noon today. In other words, I'm going to have one meal, a banana. It's going to power me for however long I decide to walk. On the last walk that I actually aired here, which will be a video that posts, I think three days before now, the walk that I took was quite difficult because of some influences that seemed to have been occurring externally. And those influences had to do with, A, the weather was different. Remember, we started out on a sunny drive and by the time we got where we were going, it was very overcast, cloudy, getting cold. I was concerned that it would be a cold hike. And as it turned out, I happened to have outfitted this vehicle for an overnight trip to colder climate which included a layered jacket system. So I was thankfully able to take my jacket and basically I had a very comfortable hike. And on the way up, I had to take my jacket off because walking up, it was quite warm and I was expending a decent amount of energy. And even as cold as it was, I broke a good sweat and I was releasing a lot of toxins. And those toxins I was releasing helped me to have a very pleasant sleep that evening, whether it was something I imagined doing. In other words, if I was sweating out just regular sweat and I wasn't sweating out things that my body no longer needed, and if it was not toxins, either way, that physical activity helped me to sleep extremely well that evening. So 
I've been sleeping well. I had a relative recently continue to send me unexpected messages that had videos on this very platform about how to sleep better, which is interesting. I, I tend to post the same kind of content, although my content might go in so many directions that some people might not really want to follow along with this channel. And at the same time, my content really ties into one simple message. So if I had a, a if I had a group where every day I just said the Lord's Prayer and that was it, and maybe I presented it in a different setting every day, I don't know what kind of subscriber base I would have, and I don't really care about what subscriber base I would have. What I mean is, on this channel, what people are looking for is something entertainment, some, something entertaining, something visually different and or something mentally stimulating that goes beyond the content that we can already read for ourselves, see for ourselves, say for ourselves. The only reason for this platform then must be for multi-directional engagement. In other words, even though it's called YouTube and I keep talking about how I'm telling my story on this tube presentation, the fact is that there is an interaction occurring. You know, we're either watching these videos together and, and being amazed by them, or we're commenting on the videos, or the notion that we're seeing this person triggers us to send a message to that person. And I've noticed this happening over and over across the board where we do get messaged on these type of channels and platforms by others who would like to participate in a conversation but don't necessarily know whether it's safe to have a conversation. And a lot of people will ask the weirdest questions to figure out if the conversation is safe. And let me think, are you married? Do you believe in God? Do you believe in purgatory? Do you, have you seen this type of plant? Have you ever experienced sharing time with this type of animal? What type of dreams do you have? What do you recommend to lose weight? There are so many different topics that we've touched on, and the main topic that I can always center right back down to is, what would the creator do? What would someone who is not here to kill, steal, or destroy do? So, that's why I say that this topic is very controversial and very difficult to wrap our head around because I got a banana, the banana came shipped from another country, and that shipping, all of that process used resources to get something to me, and even this very drive, this very journey that we're taking where you're watching this either on a, a rechargeable battery operated platform or on something that's plugged in directly to an outlet or some combination of thereof, we're using resources. And these resources, what we're using, are either to enhance the experience and the overall learning opportunity that we have, or they can divide us away from, destroy our relationship with that which we would otherwise have respected and regarded. So recently I found myself in a situation where one of my viewers reached out early in the morning with a message that they sent to me. This person has my personal contact information and they sent to me a message that had to do with sleeping better. And again, I, I covered that topic a few days ago. The, the interesting thing that came around from that conversation though is I began to inquire if this individual also sends and has these types of communication with their own children. Now, this person gave me an effusive answer, an answer where they kind of evaded answering the actual question that was presented. And I've experienced that quite frequently in the past. In the book of peace that I reference, if you do enough searching both in the book and online or even on this channel itself, you'll see that there are ways to test the spirit. And 
testing the spirit doesn't mean going and getting a bunch of shots and doing shots. Although, interestingly, I believe that you can test the spirit in that manner as well. Anyway, when you test the spirit, what you do is ask questions to acknowledge where the glory is being given to. And if someone is, is really taking it all onto themselves and trying to have all of the answers, which I know that I do not have, by the way, there are so many mysteries. If someone has all the answers and doesn't want to give credit to a higher entity and or would not ever want to join you in that specific union, if they only want to center their lifestyle around convenience-based topical engagements, like, I don't know, going out to eat regularly, these type of events are things that are distractions from getting to the meat and potatoes of the message that we are trying to discuss, trying to learn about, because we're here to learn. Whether we know it or not, we're all learning together at an accelerated pace. Multitasking is not uncommon in this era. So the person who sent me the message early in the morning, I somewhere along the line re-addressed the fact that this message had come through quite early in the morning and asked if this, these messages were also being sent with this person's own children. Because I'm curious, when someone is this excited to talk this early in the morning about something, whether it's sleeping better, making better choices, regaining our health, helping other people to get healthy again, all of these things inspire me because again, they center around one topic, which is that there is a higher power that we can pray to meditate in in order to come to these answers that we may not have on our own. We might learn these answers that we have together with the person we're naturally inclined to ask these questions to. So this person was sharing with me content about sleeping better and I myself have shared content about sleeping better as well. And so I was asking if they sent these items to their children that early in the morning because it seems like as if this person might have been sending a message early in the morning, maybe while sitting on the toilet, as they were basically engaged in their sleeping activities. And I found this out to be true through a number of mishaps in the answers that were given to me, through a number of misrepresentations, testing the spirit for truth or testing the spirit for error is sometimes as simple as asking a question, a basic honest question. And in many cases I've found that the people who are communicating with me don't necessarily communicate in an honest manner. In fact, that's why we don't have a lot of group participation sometimes because people are afraid of being outed as being imperfect and making choices that maybe didn't conform entirely with the belief system that we believed we gave credit to. And so for this reason, a lot of people can carry shame and, and that shame is carried so deeply that the ego is willing to avoid answering the question at all costs, even if it's to add another lie to cover the initial lie. And the lies don't necessarily have to be blatant lies. They can be outright accidental communications, just like what occurred in this situation that I'm about to talk about. So, so the message I received was received early in the morning. I had asked a question, did you send these, this insight to your own children? And I wanted to follow up by asking if they asked as early in the morning to their own children, these same questions. But we never throughout the course of the entire day got to the answer that was supposed to be presented. And so basically I escalated the situation by copying another member of our support group and having the same conversation saying, look, I have a question. And you continue to evade 
the question by giving additional details. I don't know if you're aware of this or not, but if you're unaware, you might want to test your own spirit. And so this person wrote back to the group saying, actually they wrote back to me individually while we were having the group conversation. They said, P.S. I was asleep at that time in the morning. And what they were doing was they were suggesting that since they were asleep, they did not send this message to me that early in the morning. And so therein began my quest to have a question answered. And that question was responded to in error. So my quest was, is this person doing something to take away my energy and to add confusion to destroy a conversational opportunity basically. And so I sent a screenshot. This is the beauty of technology today. All of all of the tactics and, and situations and skills that I've used in my IT world, in my IT realm background come into use today. So as I copied another member of our support group, another mutual respected uh, friend and relative, I asked, did, what did you actually say and what did you mean when you said you were asleep at this time? Because this screenshot shows that you actually sent me something at this time. So that would, that would lead us to conclude that there is possibly a discrepancy. There's a discrepancy in the information that's being presented. There's an error. And again, we're testing, we're, we're testing the spirits. And if you watch a lot of my videos, you'll see that sometimes I'll say one thing and maybe mean another, or I'll mean something and say something entirely different. And sometimes I'll notice that during the video and I'll be able to catch it and say it. So I'm not perfect by any mean. None of us are. I mean, I take that back. We're all perfect. You see the sun shining on us? Oh, it was blocked out. Who's throwing shade on us? That's us. That's our own selves. And the construction that we put into place that has sh has hidden, shielded us, hidden us, really, from the sun. And we have so many opportunities to recognize that, sure enough, even in talking about this conservation aspect that I'm talking about on this channel, even that person telling the story is a hypocrite. So we're all imperfect and we're all running full speed on multi-lane highways where people are not so comfortable learning how to merge into proper traffic. As a hawk is flying overhead, maybe you guys will get to see it this time. I think you may, I'm not sure, there, there goes making these points. I hope that was the hawk and not the uh, light pole. I, I can only see what's being illuminated on this tiny screen in front of me. And frankly, I'm watching traffic because there are people who have difficulties merging, who have difficulties processing multiple things at the same time, and even who forget that they were awake temporarily, but not fully awake while they were sitting on the toilet, sending a message, which was really a cry out for help. So when people, when I run into difficult conversations, I don't believe that they are sent from the, the kill, steal and destroy campground to assault me. Even if that's what they're doing, what I believe is this person is there because we are meant to have a conversation. So this conver in this conversation, we got to a point where the third party asked this other person who I had been communicating with initially, did you even apologize for the mistake that you made? And, the, and there was, it's not that there was a need for an apology so much as there was a need to possibly acknowledge the fact that there were any errors being made to begin with. And coming up on my exit. My, my lane is closed. I cannot take this exit. There's a convoy team. Just like the, the other video where there was all this stuff going on, but this time 
They blocked my lane. It's no big deal. I'm going to automatically recalculate and get to where I'm going. So magic, that's another word that causes division in some, in some circles. And these words that are continuing to cause division, like, did you apologize? In other words, did you accept peace? Did you accept responsibility? Did you accept your own actions? Did you forgive yourself for your own actions? When we walk around completely oblivious to the fact that we can take whatever we want from this world, we might find that we are caught in a loop, in a feedback loop of inefficiency and destruction if we never accept responsibility, accept peace for the circumstances that we have either carried out ourselves or presented to other people. So in this particular case, when I was asking the question, I know that the person who sent the message had already forgotten because it had been some period of time. And a lot of people forget things after just a few days or a few weeks or a few months. But I had politely asked this person to not send a message that early because it's it's not, it's not kind, you know? I mean, they don't know my situation. Thankfully, I do not sleep with my mobile device in the room where I go to sleep. And so there was no annoyance. There was no negative activity that occurred when I, when I received this message. There was nothing that really hurt me except if I were very weak-willed, it might have hurt my ego that somebody did not remember anything that I had asked politely. And so I didn't worry about it though, because it's not a big deal. And I understand this was a tricky intersection. The one that I got thrown out at there's, there's only one proper way to, to turn around and it's not to be on the lane that you would think you would be on. So anyway, this person avoided answering the question and then finally got to the point where our group moderator said, Hey, did you apologize for the error? And then the person responded saying, no, I did not resp I did not apologize because he will still be mad because he will say, I sent the message at six and not six 15. There was something very unusual in the morning. There was something very unusual about the response because it was throwing an excuse into the equation as to why an apology wouldn't be given. And in that excuse was a lot of an answer for what kind of spirit it was that we were testing. There is a spirit of error. There is an egocentric entity that comes to kill, steal, and destroy. And there is a lack of compassion among certain individuals and, and energies that we can absolutely separate ourselves from. And in order to do that, in order to separate ourselves from, from those, those feelings and from those, from those energies, there first has to be a recognition that those energies exist. And I don't necessarily like to go out of my way to catch people making errors. And in some cases, there are errors that are being made that are counterproductive to the work that we are actually doing. And when we have a group who's working together, and when I, when I put it this way, as far as our energy, when we have energy that's being shared among the group, the law of attraction, the law of peace is as simple as testing the spirit. And when we test the spirit, we start to recognize the, the proverbs and, and, the, and the sayings, show me your, your friends and I'll show you who you are. When we start to recognize that if somebody is presenting a completely different energy from ourselves, and when we recognize that this could potentially be a reflection of, if not an absolute drain of our own energy, then we start to recognize that 
maybe we don't want to continue to have those type of, of relations. So, so what we're, what we're trying to do is to protect our energy, protect ourselves. And, and when I was playing basketball in grade school, you know, you would you'd stand with your hands in front of your, your groin to protect yourself against the oncoming charge. And these are, these are simple things to think about, but the foundational movements, the foundational experiences and trainings that we've often had in the past are things that we tend to overlook as we become more comfortable in the routine low of being put to sleep in today's world. There are a lot of people who are asleep and sending text messages and wondering how how to sleep better. The quality of sleep matters. If we're trying to go to sleep and we spend all day in bed, but we're constantly waking up, constantly looking at a screen that's bright, obliterating our circadian rhythm, we're not really sleeping. And we're not really sharing any kind of insight with someone else if the information we have is in error. If it is in error that we continue to shop in ways where we bring so much produce back individually and separately wrapped in ways that are destructive, well, it's logical to conclude that this destructive action as above, so below, whatever I do to someone else will happen to me. Karma, treat others how we would like to be treated. If this destructive action continues, then we can absolutely conclude, especially by looking around, just looking around our own environment, whether or not what we're doing is healthy. So on this channel, again, I, I'm not talking a lot about the circumstance. I'm talking about a story, a story about testing the spirits, a story about wellness and conservation, a story about focus, a story about compassion. So this person was having difficulty answering and I was very direct with them. I'm not upset with them. Just like in the case where my former relative lit the house on fire this is a cry out for help. And all throughout those channels where this person was directed to have conversations, they had opportunities to get help, to, to receive help. The only thing is, can they forgive themselves for the wrongs that were done? Or are they going to be so ashamed that they can't accept that help? They can't accept that responsibility that comes with taking on that help. Because we all know someone needs to have the requirement to change in their own heart before anyone can do anything. Have you ever seen those movies, those hoarders or, or the house, move over, house makeovers where someone just completely transforms a house for somebody? If they were still going to be a hoarder and still not going to get to the bottom of changing the situation, you could take someone who lives a very filthy lifestyle, put them in an absolutely sterile environment, and they may not clean their own bathroom. You know? They might not pick up after themselves. They might they might tend to wish that they could just ignore everything around them, including the very people who we are put on this planet with to experience life with. There are a lot of channels out there that talk about these topics and it's almost 
in every case, self-interest driven. There are so many items for sale. Those items all come in packaging. We all have a local and more sustainable way to get a hold of these items that are being sold and brought to us. And yet, we don't often try to appreciate the opportunities we have before trying to add on other nuances to those opportunities. Just as an example with the person who sent me the message early in the morning who wouldn't acknowledge it at first because they don't want to acknowledge whether they sent this message to their own children. The the overall flow of energy is such that Again, we were put into contact with one another. That's all there really is to it. We were put into contact with one another to have a conversation and that's really all that I think about it. I don't have a hostility or a, an anger and yet I'm talking about it here. So so some of us will be saying that I'm airing laundry. Some of us will say things along the lines of, these are personal stories. This is a personal attack to share information about someone who's not able to have a conversation. These, these are all observations. And right now what we're here to do is to test for a spirit of truth and a spirit of error and that test usually has to be run on our own selves and so as I see as someone's able to point out hey you're making this mistake as I see these things which I, I welcome I welcome the training and the opportunity to better myself as I see and hear these oper of these opportunities I do what I can to better myself we're, we're like rocks in a tumbler I've used this analogy before Someone really resonated with that. And the metamorphosis that occurs is almost very similar to what we think about when we think about a caterpillar metamorphosizing into a butterfly. The funny thing is that the caterpillar is just as beautiful and it's just as deserving of the opportunity to experience life. It's a little warm. I'm going to vent this out just for while we're talking about this topic. I don't know how long I'll continue to talk. Um, we're talking again about basic knowledge that allows us to more effectively communicate, especially among the spirit of error. And with the spirit of error, what I've noticed is that there's often, you can relate it to bullying. Some people will bully other people. If you ask over and over, please do not do this early in the morning. Um, be more respectful of other people because you know that it's not just you. Sometimes they're sending these things to you at that time in the morning. And also because you know, in contrast, when you show the mirror, if you look at this at six in the morning and go back to sleep, you might not really have as sound of a sleep as, as you would have had to begin with. And so as you're, as you're pointing these things out, the spirit of ego will look at you and go, ah, and it'll respond in an unnatural way. The spirit of truth will respond in a respectable, responsible way, where if you asked somebody who was listening, who was able to hear, who had a heart, who was able to hear that which was being said, they would hear, I don't like it when you assault me verbally, when you hit me 
when you hit me up at six in the morning, when you hit me up with products that I, I don't really consume, I don't like it when you do that. So every time you do that, it's a dis, disgrace. It's a disregard for that other person who we're presenting this energy to. So if somebody asks me, please, I like my name to be said as so-and-so. If I know their name's spelling is a certain way, these are things that stick in my mind. Sometimes I'm not really great with names, numbers, dates, all kinds of content like that. It's a challenge. I was dropped on my head as a child, thrown into a tub head first, actually, by a relative who is, who has continued to be a bully, who has had the opportunity to get help despite setting the house on fire and going to the neighbors with the screwdriver, not the drink, an actual tool. And it wasn't a tool to fix anything except for to fix whatever was in his own being, the spirit of error. What kind of error would have been made if the neighbor had opened the door to this man who was yelling with the screwdriver at the door? What kind of error would occur? How many shows do we watch and how many news clips do we watch where those type of things are happening and they just go one step further, which causes things to unfurl? When the spirit of error is walking around in you, as you, you'll oftentimes find yourself falling down. And when you're falling down, and I have a segment on that, why toddlers and the elderly have trouble walking without falling, it's most often due to a lack of awareness. So we have a big concern about artificial intelligence becoming self-aware. We always joke about it. It's become self-aware. Imagine the power that we have when we become self-aware. Imagine the capabilities that we have to learn that we can buy and exchange energy in less destructive ways. Imagine when somebody tells you, hey, I've learned certain secrets and... I myself have walked the walk of the addict and I myself have struggled in the past to go without having certain conveniences. Conveniences is a kind word. If I've gone almost three weeks having no meat whatsoever, Think about how extra convenient it was to the animals that were not consumed. And a lot of people will say, well, they're already, it's already done. These things are in the restaurants already being served up. Served up to our fathers without ever saying any our fathers. Served up to our mothers who have never really given validation to the fact that something was the mother of what we're eating. Without the recognition without taking this and eating it as if this was his body or my body or your body without giving thanks. Sometimes we forget and we want to divide conversation saying, Oh, the way you said it, it's got to be wrong because you're not giving specific credit. The anger in the conversation is usually coming from the ego and the ego is usually more awake and can type, hammer something out at six in the morning while they're hammering something out into the toilet. As above, so below. So as you send me your missile, don't forget the things that are meant for error that are coming from the one who is meant to kill, steal, and destroy will oftentimes be redirected and used for good. 
So thankfully I have multiple persons who are on this same wavelength who we can have these group com communications with. There's definitely on one side of my family, a blockage that's occurring. And I, I like to relate that to even a blockage of the heart. When the heart has been hardened, when the ear is no longer here, when someone asks, please don't do this. And when this, the person you're, you're conversing with does what they were going to do, whether or not you have asked that when, especially when you have asked them not to, sometimes that is the simplest way of testing the spirits. And sometimes in a group complex, the spirits can go either way, but they can tune out. In two cases in my past, I had someone sitting right next to me who was yelling at me while I was driving. And in two cases in my past, I had someone sitting behind the yelling person who could have done a little bit more over the course of time to help us out. And in both cases, I had to wake up this person. In only one case has that person seemed to wake up. We can slide back and forth on scales of addiction over and over. It's been extremely difficult for me, for an example, to break my addiction to sugar, although I know I can do it. I know I have done it, and so I will no longer call it an addiction to sugar for me. It's been difficult for me to go without having and consuming all of those good, those great tasting flavor filled bursts of energy, partly because the supply has not stopped being replenished. And that's partly because I continue to want that in my life. We can want everything in the world and have it show up in our life. It's going to show up at the most unexpected times, just like the end of our life will. And if at the end of our life, we recognize, hey, somebody was asking us pleasantly to help out by not being such a destructive person. I could have learned to be a more productive person. I could have learned to eat less destructive foods that used less resources. I could have learned. So if we could have learned and the opportunities were there throughout time, then what exactly has stopped us from regaining our own health? So for me, as you've seen on this channel, it's a struggle. Addiction is a very real thing. Just because I dropped out of certain things doesn't mean that I dropped all of the weight that I gained while I jumped back into those things. Because it's hard to drop out all the way over and over especially as we engage our time and energy with destructive entities. So this year, again, for 44 years, I did it one way. This year, I've been very direct in the way that I communicate with the people who I'm put in the um, opportunity to have communicated with. And so I'm communicating with people a little bit more fluidly where I will ask a question that tests the spirit immediately, especially if we have encountered a repeat situation of disregard. And then as we communicate effectively past that point, then we're able to advance to the next conversation. And for me, the Jeep Journals is a story about a journey that occurred after I ignited this faith plus action. And that happened around the time when I got to see the Great Eclipse, the Great Eclipse which I believe was in 2017. I believe it was on August 21st. I could have the dates wrong. I'm just pulling it from random. And sometimes random is slightly off. It's why when I talk about sleeping better, 
I talk about paying attention to our sleep by suggesting that maybe after every sleep session, the first thing we do when we wake up isn't hammer out something to send to someone else on a screen. Maybe we need to hammer out journaling what our dreams were about. There's no harm to that. It's our own dreams. Some people are ashamed to share the details of their dreams, according to them. For me, I've written everything down. It, it is who I am. You know, if I'm going to be ashamed of what I wrote, that I dreamed, then I might as well be ashamed of all of those random thoughts that come to my mind. And I'll, let me tell you, the random thoughts that come to my mind are very... fun. And sometimes I have thoughts that come to my mind that are very dark. And all of those thoughts that come into my mind are things that I'm either feeding regularly with other content that's causing these thoughts to be strengthened or I'm recognizing these thoughts while simultaneously going and putting in the actions that agree with thoughts such as lead us not into temptation and deliver us from evil. So you can see our actions have a lot to do with the results that we can achieve. And our faith, some people just talk about it. But when you test the spirit, you'll recognize there are people who can talk about faith all the time and still boldly lie where no one else would lie because they don't believe that they can be seen. This is an evasive tactic that wildlife will use. Wildlife has not been domesticated. Sometimes you'll see a fox standing completely still because it was surprised by you on the trail. Sometimes you'll see a bird remain completely silent in the brush. Sometimes you'll see a snake go completely flattened against the ground not recognizing that its own scales are such a different color from the remaining environment around them that they can't help but be noticed. When we think about the opportunities to engage in conversation with one another, it pays to recognize that some who are coming to converse with us are there to partake of the energy that we have. The more I participate with the crowd that is heading in one direction, the more it seems to have taken some of my energy. So for this year, the 45th year of my own persistence, I've decided to not carry forward any of these conversations where the spirit has clearly been placed there to destroy the conversational opportunity. In order to have a conversation in a situation like this, generally what we would need to do is to have another entity present, a group conversation. A young priest and an old priest. That was a joke. <laughs> Generally, though, we do need to have another party that's neutral, more able to listen as an observer than as a participant with a direct stake in the matter. So in some cases, I've been running into difficulties because our families are not 
united the way that we thought that our country was. Our families have been, in many ways, divided. Think about all the different ways that people opted out of having a family experience during this past round of holidays. Was it due to fear from the new variant? Was it due to fear from cultural differences? Was it due to fear from orientational variances? Was it due to fear due to spiritual challenges? These are the things that we can test the spirits over if we have the time. We have the time for anything that we prioritize. When we prioritize a higher power, it becomes naturally a part of every, every fabric that's being woven in this tapestry from our craftsmanship. This interwoven tapestry of life. The devil is in the details. The proof is in the work. The truth and or errors are in the work and none of us are perfect. And those imperfections make up that tapestry. And we're either able to proudly interweave our fabric into the tapestry or we check ourselves out of the tapestry. That essentially is what I've come to learn after seeing the great eclipse and after in endeavoring on embarking on a journey that had me so convinced that the world was ending that I left my corporate job because every day of the corporate job was just a cycle of snacking and eating and following the holidays with all the giveaway items that were putting on hold the real conversation that we know is all more rewarding. The real conversation that we're wanting to have is not about, I'm going to send a clip to you that says how to sleep better. The real conversation that we're having comes down to a central aspect. Are we at peace? How can we bring ourselves back to peace? If I'm at peace, I can sleep better. If I'm at peace, I can dream better. If I'm at peace, my body can recover better. If my body's recovering better, it almost doesn't matter what I consume food-wise as long as I'm grateful for it. As long as I'm aware of what it took to get that to me. How thankful I've always been to have chocolate and blueberries. I mean, what more does anyone need? There was a time in my past, in, and I'm sure in everyone's past, especially in during the school school schoolyard era, where we all asked if there was one food that we could have for the rest of our lives, what would we have? I always wanted to have pizza. Think about it. The amazing bread, all the different ways it can be made, cheese. It seems like if we teamed up properly with our own loved ones, with our own livestock, I won't even call it livestock, with our own family, our own animal family and people family, it's possible we could produce our own cheese. It's possible we could make pizza using some of the things that we harvest if we were to plant accordingly. There are so many possibilities where if we weren't mismanaging some of the resources some of the resources would never have become as fearful of us because of our destructive tendencies. I've noticed in animals, when I have a conversation, 
with people who are a spirit of the spirit of error. Animals will flee. Maybe we should be of the same mindset. Maybe we also don't want to be in the proximity of something that's here to kill, steal, or destroy. This is why in the books of text, the books of peace, the books originally written in one language, divided up and rearranged and then translated into another language and then brought to us oftentimes with a corresponding monetary need to either share appropriately with the community in which they participate or to funnel the majority up the chain. That's why these things can be argued over in so many different ways, even though there are clear indicators, no matter which side of the spiritual camp that we are on, there are clear indicators. Somebody helped someone else to learn how to regain their health. Either by saying, walk, stand and walk, by helping people to see and hear and speak properly again. The front runner of health is we regenerate certain cellular aspects over and over, over a period of time. If for three weeks I've had no animal content that I've consumed and I've mostly consumed fruit and vegetables and nuts, most of my cellular, cellular structure will be from those nutrients. If I only consumed sugar and cookies and cake, which kind of was the case this week, <laughs> my cellular structure will come from that energy. Thankfully, all of those energies were made with love. Energy translates across the board. Spirit of truth, spirit of error. Even our foods that we have can be made carelessly with content that's counterproductive to somebody's health gains. Or it can be made mindfully with content that's mindful of a person's health needs. In many cases, what we've forgotten because there were too many of our fathers and not enough of our participants in the kitchen. What a lot of us have forgotten is that we can, can, we can make our own health choices. Each thing that we put into our hand to consume, each thing that we put on to listen to and to see is a health choice. So clearly, the choice is our own. And clearly, as I've demonstrated, some of us have in the past struggled to break free of the cycles that seem to be repeated cycles that keep us in limbo, in a purgatory, so to speak. In time out. So thank you for enjoying the time out with me on this journey. Thank you for visiting thejeepjournals.com. Thank you for taking a look at moneyforahaircut.com. Thank you for sharing these links on your own social media channel. Thank you mostly for participating by commenting in the comments area and having a discussion that really gives credit to what we are actually testing for here. Mostly, thank you for your forgiveness 
I thank myself that I've forgiven myself for my own errant thoughts and actions. I'm grateful to have had the opportunity to learn, learn better, to do better, to be better. And I'm so thankful for helping to share these insights so that all of us can have the opportunity to be better. I know that this channel is such a limited channel. It's so obscure. And at the same time, I have a feeling that it's more potent than many of the nutrients that we get out of a bottle, a prescription pill, plastic bottle, discardable, hardly ever reused for the lifetime of the owner, plastic bottle. And I'm thankful that we're talking about these things now finally and that we're making traction and we're learning, hey, we can we can absolutely remake these bottles into materials to seal soldered wires, just like we've talked about in the past. We can remake, imagine those guitar hands that I have made out of plastic bottle, pill bottle brown, clear, or water bottle blue, clear. Imagine a world where we don't get upset because the song Imagine has words in it that our ego starts to lash out at and hit, strike at somebody else. Burn down the house, so to speak. Imagine that we can do things without being so destructive. And until then, imagine, I imagine I'll see you again the next time on this journey. And I imagine that you've had a great day listening along and knowing that for another hour you've made it through without doing something destructive or irrational. I imagine that you've heard what's being said here and that it makes sense and that it is worth sharing with your significant other. This isn't something you want to hear alone anymore. You want to participate. And maybe I'm that significant other. You know, maybe we're going to have this communication together. Maybe that's what this is right here, this channel. That's us being together. Whatever it is to you, I'd appreciate it to hear from you in one way or another. Thank you for subscribing again. Until next time, this is the Jeep Journals. And we're, we're going on an adventure. Today, I'm going to do the same thing as I did the last few videos. I'm going to incorporate many of the things that I saw into this video clip by just basically overlaying the images throughout this video content. If you saw more trash than you saw wildlife, it's because that's what I saw. And unfortunately, in this world, this is what I'm being presented with. And at the same time, it's very fortunate that I'm able to show this information to you because we would not learn otherwise that these things were happening, especially if we weren't sharing these in our extremely diverse groups where we can share this information in a heartbeat. So let your heart flutter with anticipation that we're going to put action into these things that we have faith will change for the better. And uh, may your spirit be tested in a way where we know that you have the spirit of truth and where, where you can re-evaluate me and make sure that I've continued to maintain the spirit of truth. These things are something that needs to be maintained, just like any aspect of our health. There are three aspects, physical, mental, spiritual. And all of these go together. Without having all those three in the mix, the tripod will fall over. And plus, you might, you know, lose one and or one or the other and become offended at what's left vis visually. Anyway, I believe that I've carried across the information. If there's some questions that were left with this video that were unanswered, 
uh, in your mind, please type in the in the comments. I didn't get the full idea that you were talking about when it came to this topic. I didn't quite understand that topic, etc. If there's something that you feel needs to be answered, please let me know in the comments area. In the meantime, again, if this helped you in any way, I absolutely appreciate your your sharing. Sharing is caring. And like I was saying before, we're on an adventure. So till next time, peace, love, and all that old school stuff.